Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts. Welcome and welcome back. I've got a lovely little project for you today. This is very easy. You don't really need any tools for it. You can fancy it up in a few different ways if you want to. You can go to town at decorating. But you can basically make this from a book page, a piece of paper, a bit of string, a bit of twine, a bit of ribbon you've cut off for... Uh, one that sleeves on the top. You know those bits of ribbons that go around hangers? Yeah, one of them would do it. I've put eyelets in this, but you don't have to. And it does have a hidden surprise. What's the hidden surprise? Well, let's have a look. You untie it. And you've got hidden journaling. That one opens that way. I've done the others that open slightly different. I'll show you how they look in a junk journal. These are specifically made for my Edith Olden journals, but you could make them from you could make them from digital papers. You could make them from anything, anything. Piece of cardstock, decorated. You could have a couple of tags you already got made, and you could turn one of them into one of these. Right. So this is how it's going to go. Yeah. I'll just glue it a little bit at the top and at the bottom and then you can use in your journal to pop something behind. Yeah, anything you want. I'll probably pop some of the postcards behind that I've got. I'll show you how this one opens up. Oops. Yeah, I've done this so that all your journaling is on one side. Like that. And then like that yeah so it's up to you you can pop the paper in to open however you want right pop this lot to one side and I'll show you how I did it in fact I've got the same book page here that I've made two of the belly bands out of that's the one so does that look familiar and that one yeah, so I've got two belly bands out of one book page. And look, it's just paper on the back. We don't want to waste that yummy Edith Olden paper hidden away behind, behind there, do we? No, we want to see it all. Right, first one I'm going to make is using the second half of this book page. Yeah, that was that side. And I'm going to make another one that side. Now I've done these two and a half inches wide. The reason I've done them two and a half inches wide is because the first one I made, I used this tag punch to shape these ends. You don't have to use the tag punch and you, and you don't have to make them two and a half inches wide. You could make one two, you could make one one and a half, you could make it four inches wide. Yeah, I've done wide belly bands before. So that is entirely up to you. If you look at this one, I haven't used the tag punch. I've just rounded the corners. I've popped an eyelet in. You don't even have to put the metal eyelet in. You could just put a paper reinforcer around. In fact, I did get them out. And I was going to use a paper one and thought, no, I'll use eyelets. Use your eyelets, woman. But it's entirely up to you. Right. Let's make this one. So, the reason I've done it from one book page is because I like the continuity of the pattern on the top and the bottom half, yeah? I've seen people use these to make closures around other things and I thought, ooh, why not a belly band? So I'm going to look at this and decide where I want to cut it. Mm, I think I'm going to cut it in the middle of that big green leaf. Yeah, because I'm not too bothered that those two ends are the same Length. I quite like it. Slightly different. Right. So, apart from measuring that two and a half inches wide, not a lot of measuring to do. And like I say, if you're not doing that sticking end of your tag punch, your tag topper punch, you don't have to do that. I mean, you could, if you wanted, just angle the ends. You use the corner rounder as I've done. Use any fancy corner rounders you've got. If you've got a fancy edge punch, you could do a fancy edge. Oh, I might do that on one of them. But for this one, I'm going to make this one with the tag topper punch, just to show you how it works. Right. Now, when you use this tag topper punch, it does pinch a little bit 
of the edge so we want to punch the top of that bottom piece yeah there you go and the bottom of the top piece to make sure I don't get my knickers in a twist while I'm doing this I just keep putting them back on my desk as they're gonna be so you see what I mean about it pinches a little bit of the top yeah if it tried to punch any nearer edge of paper it would just crumple all that up so it's got to work like that so next thing grab your scoreboard if you've got one and use it or you can just turn the edges over uh, sometimes I like my precision sometimes I wing it a bit more but I'm going to use my scoreboard here and I'm just going to score half a, is it half did I do yeah half an inch on the top one that's very rattly half an inch it doesn't have to be half an inch you could just turn it over and guesstimate it so I've done half an inch on each pop you out of the way mate then I'm going to fold those and I'm just going to come in with my scissors and take off a sm just a smidgen not a lot a real smidgen just so it's not going to stick out you know, if it's not folded absolutely perfectly. And you don't have to do this. I don't think I did it on my first one. But I'm very careful with my prototypes. Make sure everything lined up properly. Then if you're an inker. Inka -dinka -do, <laughs> get your inking done. I'm using my frayed burlap. It's my new favourite colour. I was going off inking a little bit. But this is very, yeah, very subtle. So I like it. Now, you'll notice I sewed a couple of mine. I did sew around that. That were, that were difficult to sew around, but I did it. I went around very slow, one stitch at a time. But I got there an end. I mean, I'm mass making six journals, so I'm going to need six of these bookmarks in one form or another bookmarks well that's something I'm going to move on to you can use them as a bookmark if you want to put a piece of card on the back to strengthen this or you could just use two separate pretty book pages you might want the back of it to look pretty if it's going to be a bookmark but I like plain for writing even on a bookmark you can make notes can't you and if it's got a fold out bit of paper in the middle, even better. Right, so that's me inking done. I am going to put some metal eyelets in. Now this tag punch, the hole that that punch is, is slightly bigger. I couldn't tell you how big. It's not quite, it might be quarter of an inch. It's slightly bigger than the biggest hole on your crocodile. But, oh yeah, I got my quarter inch punch out to test. Right, I'll use this scrap. I've got it out just to test if this hole is a quarter of an inch. Ooh. Let me see. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a smidgeroony less. It's, it's hardly noticeable. So it's the perfect size to put the reinforcement rings on. Now, I've got some eyelets that I bought that are slightly bigger than the... What's the size on these? I have to look every time. I will never ever commit the size of these eyelets to memory and I will constantly forget where on here it tells you the size of them. It's, that's just how it is. Right, three sixteenths of an inch. Now a quarter of an inch is four sixteenths in it, so it's slightly bigger and that's what these eyelets are for, so they actually are perfect for this. Yeah? Your smaller ones still will fit though. Let me get a smaller one out and show you. Get one out in bronze. But I'm like, I'll use my bigger ones while ever I can. Yeah. It might seem a little bit loose, but once you've set it, it will still work. Especially if you're using one of the little metal rings on the back, which I'm going to use on these. I just think 
because I'm only punching through one sheet of book page. It is a quite a thick book page and it's not that old. Well, it's vintage. They're like 25, 30 year old, these books. But it's not antique, so it's not frail and it's not going to... Yeah, I'm trying to fish out some bronze ones. I mixed them all up. Sounded like a good, era, good idea at the time to fit them all in here, but now it's like, ooh. It doesn't really matter anyway if they don't match, but I'm in a matchy-matchy measure-measure mood today. But luckily there's not a lot of measuring to do. Yeah, they are bronze. I'm waffling on about eyelets. Ooh, had Susan, is it? Yeah, I did see a lady left a comment that my tips on using these eyelets the last time I set one. I've worked a treat for her. And it's just basically which settings to use. Some settings work better than others. Do you know, I can't do it that way around. I'm going to have to do it upside down. Look. <laughs> what, what's the matter? Have I lost all my coordination? I'm not drunk, honest. And I know someone's going to ask me about bruise on my arm. Hmm. That's... Have I locked that? No, it's half locked. So it wasn't opening wide enough. There we go. Oh, it's annoying when it does that. I just couldn't work out what were wrong then. Apparently I'm not the only one. As I use this, I press that button and lock it. Just tell me it ain't broke. Oh my word, it's not broke, has it? No, that's locked. Unlocked. It just doesn't seem to be opening as wide as it used to. <laughs> I don't know. Could I be the first uh, junk journal... Junk? I can't say it. I can't say it. Junk journaler in history to break a cropper dial. It's highly likely. I can break most things. I've never took so long to set an eyelet in my life. That's it. Sorted. Yeah, so the settings I use are my base I have on number two. Because these all have little numbers on the base one. And this one I have on... Because I'll not remember. A. A2. That's what I use for my eyelets. It rolls the back over rather than splays it out and it leaves it not rough. If it is rough, get a nail file and just file it off. Right, have I done enough waffling yet? Can I crack on with making what I'm making? Right, so there we have our book page. Now, as for measurements, you just want to make sure that this section is less than the height of your page. I should have mentioned that before. Look, I'm in, so not into measuring, I'm just not doing it. Now that measures eight, but the gap can be increased. Yeah, I don't even care what gap I've got. I'll just have whatever gap I end up with. There you go. So the Edith Eldon book page is eight and a half inches high. What's your paper in US and somewhere else that has that size paper ladies eight and a half by eleven yours is eight and a half so you would have more of a gap if you use this book page but you could use any book page you want you could have one that were 11 inches tall you then would just be able to yeah turn more over it back or just cut some off just cut some off somewhere so i should have mentioned that I've started with a book page that's eight and a half inches high. But having said that, again, you ladies in the US, this will fit perfectly on my A4 paper, which is eight and a quarter inches. So perhaps if you start with one that's eight and three quarters, if you want it to come out exactly the same as mine, it's one of them. Just play around with it, faff about with it. You'll see as I go on, each one I make is going to be a different size. Right. Well, that was a right waffle fest, that, weren't it? Grab some paper, woman. So I've got my tea dyed paper, dyed by the lovely Marty. <laughs> Why I can't remember the name of Marty's shop. It will be flashing up on the screen now. So I'll do that when I do my basic editing. Right, I've got this. It's a sheet of paper. It measures, as I've just said, eight and a quarter inches high. Bye. 11 and three quarter inches wide. 
Now I'm going to bring my scoreboard back in. You can just use the markings on your mat. You can use uh, just a ruler, a mark it with pencil. And I want this to be two and a half inches wide. Yeah, I don't want it to be any over two and a half or it will stick out of the side. If you don't mind your paper sticking out, make it over two and a half. I don't want to be too far under two and a half or it'll just look a bit daft in the middle of my two taggy bits. So, to just under two and a half inches. Can you see, just a smidgeroony under, it's not even a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to make my first fold. Now this is if you're making a belly band that's two and a half inches wide. So whatever width your belly band is, fold your paper to that. So I'm going to fold, and then I'm going to fold back. Now I'm just feeling that that doesn't come out further. It's hard this when you've not got your head right or top. There we go. You could, of course you could measure it pencil but well, where would fun be in that there you go and then I'm gonna turn it again I'm just concertina folding this Fold that one back on itself. I've got a feeling I've done something wrong here and folded this at something like two and three quarters. No, still two and a half. Strange. The last one I did, I had to cut some off, so I'm a bit, a bit baffled. Yeah, that's right, Wigs. So bring these back. Now, I'm going to turn that one over just because I want it to look nice and pretty on front. So that is going to be how my paper goes in my junk journal. Now I've got to decide, do I want it to open that way or that way? I don't think it really matters so much. If you're only going to write on one side, just open it the way. If you're making it for yourself, if you're happy writing on the right hand side of the belly band, I suggest doing it like that. But it's not it's not much of a muchness. Depends how much you journal. Right, so I'm now going to pop these on. That's my top. And that's my bottom. I've done it this way so that I know which way round to put them yeah and then I'm going to turn it over like that because what I now want to do is I want to glue these little flaps to my back piece of paper and if I don't do it like that I get my knickers in a right old twist and I don't know where to glue or what to do so that's a little tip for you <laughs> keep it looking as much like end products as you can throughout and you'll, you'll know you're not going too far wrong Right, I'm going to put glue on there. I'm using Barely Arts glue. Reason being, that's what I picked up rather than my art glitter. Off camera, I would probably just use bog standard PVA for this. But this, these two glues dry quicker than P, bog standard PVA. Now I'm just going to turn that round and I'm going to look here. That looks to be lined up quite nicely. If it were quite skewiff like that, I'd just have a little bit of wiggle room with my glue to straighten it. But no, I'm happy with that. But I've said I'm in perfection mood, but it's a junk journal at the end of the day. Now I'm going to come in and do this bit. Although I do, I think because I give away and sell most of my junk journals, I, I can tend to be a little bit more of a perfectionist with them because they're not for me. Ooh, I forgot some at all, oh, just in nick of time, just in nick of time. Because that is the exact height of my page, I need to just trim a little bit off. Just a little bit, about 16th to an eighth of an inch. 
Oof, did that just in the nick of time. Because can you see how that, we're gluing that, it's just short of the fold. Also by gluing it while it's laid down like this, you ensure that that will close properly. Yeah, it, it comes just short of that fold. Right, let's have a look. Can you see that is so not straight? That's about as straight as a donkey's iron leg that is. So I'll just wiggle it a little bit. Now it's straight. Upside down but straight. Phew, we did it. Yes, yeah, so that first one, it's do as I say, not do as I do. We will make another one. So there we have it. Now to tie it, I've used some twine. Is that what? Yeah, that's one that I'd already cut. If anyone wants to know how much, roughly, roughly about ooh, 18 inches. But the length of twine you'll need will vary depending on how far apart your tags are. Whether you're using twine, ribbon, seam binding, use whatever you want. Now, this makes for a nice low profile belly band this. It doesn't add a lot of bulk but it has an awful lot of journaling space. Do my funny little bow. So there we go, there we have another one. Exactly the same as that one, only difference being we cut the paper in a different place. What's that going to be like height wise? That's looking good. That will fit on my A4 sheet. If you're wanting to put it on a different height, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, actually more perfect than the original for height. Yes, don't forget to cut your paper inside down to the correct height, which is going to be about an eighth of an inch shorter than the page you want to put it on. Right, so that's those two. I'm now going to make one without any tools. And I'm going to grab a different piece of paper, and I think I'm going to make this one a little bit wider. Right, I've got this book page and I really want to do one with that book page. Now, that would be very wide. I don't think I want to do one that wide. I just want to isolate that one yummy flower in the middle. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to be brave and I'm going to cut this book page. Right, I'm going to cut there first. I know I want to just get the top of that flower on, so I'm going to cut it there. So these are very versatile, these. If you're not doing that tag shape top, they don't have to be a particular width at all. And as long as your book page is as least as, at least as high as the page you're going to stick it on, or within, I'd say, half an inch. Um, no, I don't want to do a four and a quarter inch wide belly band but I'm going to do that and do it there and, that, and that's going to be a three and a quarter inch wide belly band yeah I like the look of that I really do now this one in a way is going to be even simpler I don't know why I've just put chopper away when I'm going to need it get your little one out missus and I think I'm going to cut it there yeah yeah, I'm happy cutting it there. Nearly cut it before I wanted to then. Oh, shall I cut it there? I'm going to cut it there. There. I don't know why, but I find these more pleasing when the top one is slightly shorter than the bottom. No idea why. That is just an oddity. An oddity particular to me. There's a lot of them. That can be a little bit odd. <laughs> Right, oh, pick your tools up off floor, woman. Get your granny grabber out. I put these tools down up floor and then they fall down. There you go. My scoreboard. Right, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Let me grab a piece of paper. Right, so that's the height of the page I'm going to use. Yeah, if you wanted those to be further apart, 
you could score at a different place if you want them to be right buttered up to each other I mean you could have them overlapping even if you wanted yeah that's put the yeah, new idea have them overlapping and fasten them with a velcro dot that's an idea but this one my book page is eight and a half that's eight and a quarter so I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did with the last one and I'm going to score it half an inch from the top on that one and half an inch from the bottom at the bottom. So, half an inch and put it at top woman where your actual marking is, half an inch. I'm going to come in with my scissors and just take that smidgen off. Just a teeny smidge. The closer together the two ends are going to end up, the more precise you really need to be. Because if they're a good, some of those, they're so far apart, if they didn't line up properly, you'd never know. Don't put that on the floor because you won't be able to reach it again. Now, I'm just going to round those corners using the toad corner rounder. I'm going to use large end. There we go. And that one. Now you could even do a button string closure on these. Oh that was nice. Button string closure. I don't think I want to do a button string closure right in the middle of that lovely big flower though, because I'd not, I'd miss out on seeing a lot of it. Maybe if you're doing it out of just a plain book page that you're then going to embellish, that would be nice. I've done plenty of button string closures on plenty of videos. I might do one. We'll see how we go for time. Wee. We got a wee in. You have had a few comments from people saying how quiet Gertrude's been. In fact, I've had quite a lot of new subscribers lately who may not even know who Gertrude is. Gertrude is my listening speaking device provided by a big company called Amazon. <laughs> I don't want to say her name. And she is the first generation from when they first ever came out there's some things a poor old girl can't even do now. She won't even play me songs on Spotify. Shocker. Yeah. Never mind, I'll just listen to them on YouTube. Yeah. But she just, she used to pipe up randomly. And now she's very quiet. She's very quiet a lot of the time. She used to miss hear what I was saying. And, yeah come in with little pearls of wisdom about nothing in particular and she just doesn't seem to do it much anymore poor alexa oh <laughs> sorry to everyone who owns one oh she's uh, the rings flashing the light oh stop it oh, no so i do apologize to anyone who owns one who's activated but i think that just confirms that i think mine has gone a little bit deaf yeah she's gone a bit deaf in her old age right I'm going to put these holes in. Now with the tag top, we knew the hole was going to be in the centre. You can measure it and get it dead in the centre, but who's got time for that to be quite honest? So what I'm going to do is that's my top, that's my bottom. I'm just going to put them on top of each other. And I'm going to eyeball where the centre is. Where's the big hole? Do, do, do. There it is. Oh, hang on, if I'm going to use them bigger eyelets, I'll use my quarter inch punch. Yeah. So I'm still going to eyeball this. There we go. That looks about right. There we go. So now, even if it's slightly to one side or other, I know they're still going to be directly above each other. Turn them back right around now, woman. There you go. So we're not going to have one over here and one over here so that when you tie it, it pulls everything squiffy. Yeah, so pop them together like that. Punch it. Job will be a good one. So I'm going to put an eyelet on this. Yeah, we'll make one more with a button string closure. 
just keeping an eye out light again. I seem to be filming at a time when light's moving around the side of my house, but it's still not bright enough for me to be able to see everything. So that's one set. Oh, we're still fine. You can see, I can see. Squeeze that a bit harder, woman. Yeah, the bruise on my arm. My little cat did it. It's my fault, really. <laughs> you know, if, if you watch me often, you'll know I've got a rescue cat, Nala. And when we got her, she was so terrified of everything and everybody. We really couldn't go near her. And she's got so much tamer lately, but... But... You should still not try and stroke that cat when she's not in the mood for stroking. And what did I do? I'm like, yeah, she'll, she'll come round. No. She, were, <laughs> she was showing me with her face, showing me with her ears, showing me everything that she did not want stroking. And of course, I went in above her from the front, which she didn't like anyway. I'm like, yeah, you what? You're a cute kitty now. No. So she clawed me. Yeah, so. Yeah, that one come a bit keen. And for some reason that one bruised me. Yeah, I had someone mention uh, in comments about the fact that I've always got a lot of bruises. I just have. There's nothing wrong with me. I have always been like it. I bruise very easily. I've had tests in the past. I've had doctors see bruises on me and be like, oh, we need to test. There might be something wrong with you. No, there's nothing wrong with me. I do get anemic quite often, but I've had that all my life. And it is just bog standard anemia. I think if it's something more serious after 50 years, I think, yeah, something would be a miss, wouldn't it? So, yeah, I, do, I bruise easy. I bruise like a peach. I've got to think, ouch, and a bruise pops up. Right, that's that done. Grab a piece of paper because I've gone severely into waffle mode. Now, we know that one is three inches wide. So, this time I'm going to measure it on my mat. The zero mark is off end, but one, two, three inches. So I'm going to line that up on edge because you might not have a scoreboard. You might just be folding. Although if you are just getting into junk journaling crafting, I would say a scoreboard is one of the most important things. You're going to get a lot of use out of it. Some might disagree, but... I use mine for a lot more than just scoring. It's brilliant for lining things up. I, I'm not going to mention who, but I saw someone use one of those stamp positioning tools, a branded one. <laughs> the biggest brand in the USA, perhaps the only brand in the USA, to line something up, to stick it together. And there, yeah, she thought it were best thing since sliced bread. And I'm thinking I already do that with my uh, scoreboard. Do, do, do. I mean, I could use it to help me line these up a bit more. I'm quite happy. Now my last one, I'm not too bothered. Yeah, so because this is wider at three inches, my paper's 11 and 3 quarters. I've got nearly four folds. Yeah, like so. I'm happy. I'm happy as a piggy muck. Now, I will remember that my page is that high. When I stick these on the edge, that will increase the height of this. Why on earth is that a different size? Why? Why? What happened there then? What happened? That's three inches. That was supposed to be, th it's three and a quarter, isn't it? Not three. So abandon that. We'll save that for a three inch wide one. I bet people were shouting at me there, weren't they? But it's not lost. It's just put off for, we'll make the next one three inches wide, yeah? That I'm going to do with button string closures. So I've grabbed another piece of paper. And I'll show you another way of folding. There's many ways you can do it. What did my mum always used to say? There's more than there's more than one way to skin, and I don't know why they said cat. I I've changed that to rabbit because maybe because I'm a cat lover. It's a, it's a Yorkshire saying. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Who'd want to skin a cat? Crazy people. Right, I've made a mark at three and a quarter, and I want to fold 
at just less than three and a quarter. So if I can see that mark on my long side, I know I've folded it just less than three and a quarter because that's how big this one is not three silly woman I mean it doesn't have to be as wide but let me show you this again I don't like it as much when that paper is I just don't like it as much when the paper is not the same width as those I just don't maybe I'm being finicky maybe I'm being finicky but yeah, there's more than one way to skin a rabbit. Man, just suppose rabbits. There's more than one way to skin an orange. <laughs> there you go for the vegans out there and the vegetarians. There's more than one way to skin a potato. There actually is, isn't there? As I get older, I'm turning into I can't be asked to use a potato pit. Oops, I've just swore. Can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> to use a potato peeler, I'm just going to hack it away, hack away at it with a knife. Right, that last one. Just tuck it in however it goes. I do think the two and a half lends itself to our, to the paper. Maybe two and a quarter would be really good for US sizes, I don't know. There we go. Let's see if that fits. Oh, bye it. That does. Bye. Right. You look gorgeous tonight, Petal. <laughs> My UK watchers of a certain age may remember that phrase from an advert for a beer called Boddington's. Oh, that takes me back a bit. Right, I'm now going to just take a little bit off of you. Just about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch, not a lot. Just yay much. Right, I'm going to make sure this folds out the way I want it to. I want it to go that way. I'll do a... That way will do. And then it can go that way. Pop my top on. Pop my bottom on. There we go. Turn it over and get doing some gluing. Have I forgot how we all this rabbiting? No, ever goes wrong when you're making it. No. I do, I say I talk to myself, which I do, but I don't talk to myself quite as much as I talk to you lucky lot. Aren't you lucky to have me wittering in your ear? service you never knew you needed yeah. I'm just lining there up I weren't sure if that was straight or not I th what's that phrase it's straight enough let's have a look at the top just gonna touch it up a little bit yeah I'm liking uh, using barely arts for this it's got slightly more wiggle time than my art glitter yeah I think this might be one kiss one yet, but it still looks good. Let's turn that round to make my life easy. Being a right handed person, as if life's not easy enough already. We have all the advantages. Ooh. It's amazing how many things really are back to front for left handed people. Loads of left-handed people in my family. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Don't know why that's funny. Yeah, that's looking straight, you know. I like it. There we go. Oh, that one's pretty. I don't think that one even needs any decorating, does it? If you look at my earlier ones, where I've got just a blank bit, I've just put an Edith Olden butterfly on. And same with that one. That one that I did with you, I've not done anything with. I think that might need something there. Maybe a label. I think I've got some bees in a book somewhere that I need to cut out. I might save that and do a bee. Right, grab a bit of twine or... Shall I? 
Too much pink, do you think? Too much pink. Is that pink overkill? Yeah, it could be. Stick with your twine. You may notice <laughs> you may notice I've changed to um seam binding, not thumbnail, but you know that already. I don't. Because I've not took that photo yet. Where's end gone? How long's a piece of string? I don't know. I'll tell you when I find end and start measuring it. And I started from middle here. It, yeah. There'll be lots of ways that a tidy, organised person could make sure they never lose the end on a bit of string. But I'm not one of those people. I'm organised. Organised chaos at times. But tidy. Yeah. And I wonder where my kids get it from. <laughs> I got them tidying the other day. I went into the bedroom, started picking stuff up and throwing it away. Just rubbish. Yeah, rubbish. If you've had teenagers, you know. Teenagers, I think, there must be a thesaurus somewhere where you look up bin and it says floor, it's the same thing. I don't know why. I'm just guesstimating that. You can cut your like and tie it with anything you want. Ribbon, seam binding, sorry. Well, I want the sorry silk to be a bit bulky. Yeah, this is why I'm using string, not seam binding. I don't want that amount of bulk on a page. So that's that one. Oh, I like it. So that one, it's got no sewing. It's I've not used a tag topper. The only tool, like I say, you could have just punched a hole and put a paper reinforcer around so you wouldn't have even needed um, eyelets you can round corners by hand very easy to round corners by hand if you just I'm going to show you oh that'd be perfect that wouldn't it never thought of that I always say grab something round and pop it in the corner but oh yeah the Tim Holtz ink pad how perfect is that for rounding a corner I'm digressing now and waffling off on a tangent right how long go it oh i can I'm, i can do one more i'm gonna do one more with a button string closure for anyone who hasn't seen a button string closure done yet and wants to i'm just gonna have a quick tidy two ticks and grab another bit of paper and i'm back so i've got a piece of paper piece of paper book page i've moved some rubbish out of my way that don't need to be there i've tied the bows on these i've now got five i'm making six journals so i really only need one more so button string closure if you're unfamiliar with what that is it's one of those where you get your, you don't use real buttons although you can i did once do one with real buttons you get your little circles and your bit of twine and wind it round so i'm just going to get those two circles out I punch those out a brown card with my one inch circle punch. That's not my one inch, that's my three quarter inch. That's my one inch. I'm not doing another because as you can see, when I've got scraps, I just punch loads out. Now, let me grab, grab this one. I want to put button string closures on so I don't want to pick a design where the best bits are in the middle. So I've gone for this page where I've got some lovely swallows up at the top. Are they? Sand martins. They look a bit like swallows but they have longer tails. And I've got the flower at the bottom. So I've got two circles of card. And I think if I go for the smaller one actually, three quarters of an inch I'm going to go for for this. I'm going to punch two bits out of some random... I'll use that. That looks weird. I don't know why it looked weird, it just did. That. And that. Because I want them to look pretty. And I'm also going to punch two bits out of a couple of bits of card for strengthening. I think this box dates is pre me having a three inch three quarter of an inch punch so i'm just going to grab some card that'll do it's an awful color well it, it's not but it is <laughs> somebody might like it it's a bit too i don't know it's not pastel enough but it's not bright it's a bit too in the middle it never seems to match anything so i've just cut two circles now 
out of that card and I'm just going to glue these together. I'm going to use my art glitter glue because I do think that dries even quicker than barely arts glue. Use what you've got. If you prefer using double sided tape use that and I'm just going to glue that to that. And these are what we call the buttons and then I'm going to do the same with this one. Bit of glue on, Wee. and yeah, that way. Then I'm going to punch holes in the middle with my small hole punch. Right. I prefer to do it this way around. I say this every time I do one of these. Because if I don't, someone tells me this other brilliant way to do it that I just, for some reason, I always muck up. And I think it's because of the punches I use. I like to guesstimate that's the middle. Then I'm going to come in. I'm going to use the big. Shall I use big old, not little one? No, I'm going to use little one because I'm going to fasten them with brads rather than eyelets. Got something stuck in there from the last time I used it. So I'm using the one eighth of an inch hole. Now you can even just poke this size hole with a pokey tool. Has that cleared? What on earth were I punching? Because it won't come out. There you go. Lord, no, what worry? Oh, it's fabric. Yeah, I've been punching holes in fabric. Where's the red dot? <laughs> still, I've still got cement. Oh, this is terrible. Get you even get a pointier pokey tool, woman. Get one that is actually lethal. Well, it's not lethal, is it? There you go. Yeah, I just use a very, very, very small ball tool. It's. <laughs> Not quite pointy enough to stab me because, yeah, I'm a bit accident prone at times. And I'm going to. There you go. Now, another way you can make these holes is to do that first. And then, but see, I've, I've done it wrong already and wasted some paper. I either punch it so far in, I can't get my punch around that hole. Or not far enough in. And then I don't know, I struggle to get that straight more than just putting a dot on after. Although that one's quite good, I've just made a liar of myself. But look, I've still... Yeah, I always do something wrong, so I prefer to do it this way around. If it doesn't turn out perfect, I'm not going to spit my dummy out, I'm not going to cry. I'm a big girl now. I'm just going to ink them edges for a bit of definition. Now I've made these first because these will finish drying now while I cut my paper so when that's done they're going to be round about there yeah I quite like that so we've decided we're going to make one three inches wide because we've already folded some paper three inches wide let's just check that's where it is yay three inches so I want a three inch strip off here and I've chose this because, as I say, it's got things going on at the top and at the bottom and not as much in the middle. I just really don't want to cover the, all Edith's best bits up. So, a three inch strip. Let's see where three inches would be. It'd be that. We'd cut that swallow's nose off. That'd be just so tragic. So I'm going to come over... So that I've still got, it's not a swallow, it's still a San Martin, but I'm going to call it a swallow. There you go. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and cut off this end now, so that we've got a strip that's three inches wide. Oh, that's going to be perfect. There we go. I'm a happy bunny with that, and I'm going to cut it in half while I'm here. And I'm going to cut it. Hmm. I'm going to cut it there. Like so. I 
Uh, get your scoreboard back out, woman. Where have you put that? I, I went off camera and tied it up, didn't I? So, Lord knows where that's going to be now. So, tell you what, let's fold this one. You know, like I said, you can fold it. Just fold it, woman. Guesstimate it and fold it. Put your money where your mouth is. I say it a lot, and if you don't have this tool, you can do so and so. So, let's just do it. Right, there we go, that's that. And I want to fold bottom on this one. Do you know what? I think I'm going to fold it. Just, that's probably not far enough. I'll fold it so we get the wild strawberry and the San Martin on, but we don't get the Latin name. We can't read it anyway, well I can't. So... Is that straight? Looks straight enough to me. Yeah, if it's not, we'll make we'll make slight adjustments as we go. I can see that's not blooming straight. There we go. So that's my top and that's my bottom. I'm going to round these corners with a big corner rounder. There we go. I'm going to come in and ink again. Do you know, I don't know why I paused to tidy up, because I think muscle memory puts your hand where something was. When I've tidied up, I have no idea where I've put it. So the moral of that story is never tidy up. It's bad for you. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it halts your creativity. Causes unnecessary delays. It really does. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone who's done a book, a belly band recently for me coming up with this idea. Because I did want belly bands in my journals and loads of people, Kerry Griffiths has done one, Tracy Fox has done one. They've done belly bands recently and I'm like, well, I've got to come up with something different now, haven't I? It's, you just do. <laughs> You've seen what they do. I know a lot of my subscribers watch their channels, so I'm like, well, I don't want to just do the same thing, do I? I need to come up with something else. But uh, it's brilliant that how one person's creativity can spark someone else's. I love it. Right. So that's where my button string closures are going to go. Ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm going to grab my brads. And here we go, brads. I've just cut bit out. We're on not camera into the middle of next week. Going up all giddy, gave me brads. Because I remembered I've got some different brads. Right, these, old as the hills. Adam years. I don't know, even know if Paper Mania cap, do capsule collections anymore. I'm telling you, they're older than my kids then, probably. These are Temio. They're the ones that all have little screws. I know Tim Holtz does some. But you get a fair few more in these. Except these I got from Amazon. I don't know if they're still available. If they are, I'll link them. Oh, tell me, oh, they do punches and all sorts like that. So I think I might send Edith a little bit industrial. We can have industrial Edith and use some screws. I'm going to use a puzzle. Oh, that copper one looks nice. That looks nice. Use copper. I've got a positive... And a negative, there you go. I know it's not positive and negative, it's... it's <laughs> Philip said, oh, we call them posse. Posse in this country. And I think that's why, because they look like a positive. I don't know if that's why, I've just... Yeah, that's the conclusion I've come to. Right, so I'm going to grab my hole punch. And I'm going to use the small one to put the hole in there. Make sure that's clear. Yeah, that's cleared it. I've no idea why the other one won't clear. And just like I did last time to make sure my holes are going to match up, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to faff too much deciding where, when, what, on what part of the picture I want this. I know how far from edge I want it, so I'm going to mark it while it's back to front. I'm just going to use my green pen. Lovely green gel pen. Glitter gel pen. And I'm going to just pop that hole through. I've marked it just to make sure that 
my little button will fit. That I know that's not middle, so I'm just going to hutch over a smidgen. That's near at middle, isn't it? There we go. Back right way. And I'm going to open the legs on this brad. And close them back together. Because there's no worse than trying to do that. After you've got it through. Whee. Yeah, granted I were opening them a bit wide. I didn't need to do it that much, but yeah. Just in it just enough so that you can grab it when you get through. Pop those through holes. And open them up. Don't press it too tight because you need a little bit of it needs to be loose enough so that you can get your string behind. I'm going to use this same string. Yeah, oh, that's going to fit lovely. Yeah, but now on the back what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put two... Do I want to? Do you know, I'm going to leave them as they are. That'll give you opportunity to change them should you wish them out be gluing out on the back. You're not going to see that until you open it. So no, I'm not going to I'm not going to be overly concerned with the fact that we've got brads on the back. So they're on. I know they fit. I'm now going to glue these to my paper. Did I cut that paper down to size? I'm going to have to measure it to find out. I'm not sure. Mm, no, I don't think I did. I honestly can't remember. And it's roughly eight and a quarter our paper. I may have, I may have done it. I may not have. Oh well. I've took some more off now. I can always shorten page. I'm sticking my belly band too, can't I? Right. I'm happy with that opening like that. Yes. So I'm going to pop that there. And this here, and I really hope, oh yeah, I'm thinking what if, what if they overlap each other because I've cut my paper too short and they don't, but that looks good, I like that. So I'm going to grab it, turn it over, I'm just going to move that slightly, just in a better position for me to see whether I've got it glued on straight. Right. I don't know if I've took a smidgen off them edges either. So let's do as I say, not do as I do. Like I said, the first one I did, I'd lined it up perfectly and it didn't matter that I'd not just... What's it called? Mitered that edge a little bit. It was fine. Just took it up in, but not too tight. That looks good. Yeah, and then I want to stick this bottom one on. And then on this one, because I don't want to put just one button string closer in my journal when everything else is done with an eyelet in my six that I'm making. I'll show you how to make this into a bookmark. It's very simple. Most of you probably already know. Probably looking at it and thinking you don't need to show me that Julie, it's so obvious. But do you know, as we all know, well I know, sometimes the obvious to you is not obvious to everyone else. And it's not because it's a stroke of genius, it's just the simplest things sometimes just pass you by, don't they? It's like, why on earth didn't I think of that? I have people say that to me all the time and then I try and give them, give them an example of when I didn't think of some of it. Because some of the things I don't think of are just like mind-blowing. Right, so we've got that. Now I'm going to grab a piece of... Yeah, let's use a piece of Edith Olden paper. Let's keep everything matchy-matchy. You've got plenty of paper to write in this bookmark, haven't you? I want a piece that's text on both sides. Have I got one of those? I don't you know, or one that I'm not really keen on at the, late, at the least. No, I don't think I have one there. 
I separated them all out and I don't know where I've put the text only ones. What we got? No, we can't use that. Well, let's use that. Yeah. It's, it's the rest of that one, so it will definitely be matchy matchy. And I'm going to cut it to three inches wide. I'm obviously going to have to alter the height more. I'm going to cut that side off, I think. Yeah. Cut that off. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that to the back. I'll glue it on before I trim the top and bottom. Uh, let's have it there. Yeah. Let's have it there so that we've got all that description on. We'll, end, we'll cut that random odd number off. So, I'm only going to glue to this bit. Oh, that could give you another secret journaling spot. A secret tuck spot in your bookmark. I just don't want to glue to the paper and have it all wrinkly all the way up on that first page. Make a nice straight line along the very edge. And I'm going to glue that so that we can see we've got that wordage on. Wordage? Is wordage a word? I mean, it must be. That looks good. Yep. And then I'm just going to trim top and bottom. Just being careful I don't cut that actual one. That looks good. Oh, I like it. Let's ink that. I mean, this could be then just a little gift that you give to someone. Whee. You could go to town with these. You could do all sorts. All sorts, I say. You could put little pockets on front. I mean, I don't do a lot of decorating when I'm using my Edith Elden pages. I just like to let Edith's gorgeous artwork speak for itself. I don't think always I'm going to add anything by sticking a label on these. I see them as a little bit too modern. I don't know why for old Edith's work. Now I'm just going to grab a bit of string. Now you can permanently fix, well permanently, by tying it in a knot, but sometimes I don't think you even need to do that. I'll just start off, wrap it round there a couple of times, bring it round. You can go up and down or in a figure eight, whatever you prefer, as many times as you want or feel the need for. And that's that. And then we have our little bookmark belly band whatever you want to call it that's aha got another one oh my glue had seeped a little bit there that's the first time I've had one stick like that so be careful I'd put a little bit too much glue on it had seeped out and it had stuck the pages together so it might be an idea once you've glued those on open that up so that can't happen and on here, woohoo, we've got a little, hmm, don't know what I'll do with that. I'll perhaps come back with another idea another day on that one. Or someone might beat me to it. One never knows. Does one. Right, so there we have it. Belly bands with hidden journaling that you can also use as a bookmark. I'm sure I've lost one. Here we go. And that's my lost one. So we've made, we've made four there together today. Oh, have we made three? I don't know, I can't count. Right, I've been videoing too long. Brain's gone. So it's time for me to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. If you want to check out any of my other videos, I'll have a couple coming up here on screen. I'll put a couple of Edith Holden ones up in this same series. So thank you.
See you later.